Hello, I'm Roger Pisby from Skill Builder and I'm here talking about problems with radiators. Now, a lot of people have got central heating radiators. I know they're going out of style. We're all going for underfloor heating now, but if you've got a radiator and it's not getting hot, I wanna just guide you through a few of the problems you might encounter. Okay, so why isn't it getting hot? You've got your central heating on, your thermostat's working, maybe the rest of the radiators are getting hot, but you've got one which isn't. Now, what you can find is sometimes if you feel it, you get a cold spot all around the bottom and it's getting hot on the top. Now, if you've got that problem, then what you're dealing with is sludge. That's magnetite. That's basically the system corroding away and building up a layer of sludge, which is oxide in the bottom of the radiator and the water isn't able to get its way through. Now what you can do, if it's not too severe, is you can inject a little bit of sludge remover or cleanser, system cleanser, you can get lots of these now, put them in the end of the radiator and let that run around the system for a couple of weeks and then drain the system out a few times. You can get rid of quite a lot because that puts that sludge back into suspension. If you can't do that, then the next thing is probably to take the radiator off take it out in the garden, give it a flush through with a hose and see if you can solve it that way. If that's not gonna work, then the only other thing left to you is a power flush, which is usually a fairly expensive job to have done, but that will flush all the rubbish out your system and give you a nice clean system as new to go. Sometimes you do find that problems with power flushing, if the radiator's on its last legs and you've got corrosion in there, it sometimes can loosen so much sludge that the radiators end up leaking. But anyway, that's the worst case scenario, if you like. Now, the other problem you get is that you get air collecting along the top of the radiator, which means that the bottom is hot and the top is cold because the air being light in the water rises and accumulates in there. So what you need to do in that situation, every plumber carries one of these on the key ring, you get yourself a radiator key, and I'd recommend that you go and get a nice brass one from the plumbing store. And then at the end here is a bleed screw. And we put the key into the radiator, it's just a bit clogged up with paint. Sometimes you have to dig that out with a small screwdriver. And then we just turn it. Now don't turn it very much, just turn it a tiny bit until you hear it hissing. And then as soon as you see the water come out, turn it back off again and that means that the air has gone and the water's in the top. Now if you're finding that you're having to do that on a regular basis that's because you've got air coming to the system from somewhere maybe being sucked in by the pump on a negative pressure or from some other reason and if that's the case you need to have the system looked at because if you're bleeding your radiators every few months then that is a sign of advanced corrosion. And if you don't do something about it, you will find that you'll get leaking radiators and maybe even your boiler will start leaking. So don't ignore it, do something about it. So they're the two simple things which are to do with sludge and air. The other thing that is very, very common is the radiator doesn't get hot. You might feel down here and you might feel that the pipe's getting hot to about here, but no further. Now. Very often these days, we've got thermostatic radiator valves on the radiator. And these, especially over the summer, when there's no activity taking place with a thermostatic radiator valve, you'll find that they jam. Some are worse than others. In actual fact, these valves are really cheap Italian valve geocominis, probably about the cheapest valve you can get and I've never had any problem with them jamming. Whereas some of the more expensive ones, like the Drayton, for example, I've had regular problems on, and the Danfoss. So just goes to show that spending money on a product doesn't always work out. So what we've got, once you take that little head off, that actuator head off, which is fairly easy to unscrew, in the top here, we've got a pin. Now. Don't pull that pin out with a pair of pliers because if you do, you'll get a jet of water squirting out. And don't wiggle the pin because you may bend the pin. But what you can do is you can just press up and down on that valve. Now immediately I can feel it releasing. So we know that that's moving. And that will 
take that seat, the, the rubber seal if you like, which is jammed onto the seat, and let it off the seating and it should start to function. If it doesn't start to function, you heard it here first, hit it, not with a hammer, but something like that, soft bit of rubber, just go tap it a lot. And if you just give it lots and lots of taps, you sometimes find that a little bit of vibration is enough to start the thing moving again. But either way, a little bit of exercise and away it'll go. I normally have great success doing this and as a plumber I've earned an absolute fortune over the years going into people's houses and just doing that little tapping operation and they wonder what they're paying me for. So, very simple thing you can do. By the way, I would just say one more thing. The other call out that I've had as a plumber over the years, time and time again, is people taking the radiators off the wall to decorate behind and relying on this thermostatic valve to keep the radiator closed. Now, if you turn it right down to zero, to as low as it'll go, it will stop the water flowing. So you take the radiator off the wall, drain the radiator off, take it off the wall, and you think, okay, that's all right. You do your decorating. Now, sometime in the middle of the night, the temperature in the house drops. And if it drops to around five degrees centigrade, this valve will open up. And I have been to houses which have been completely flooded out because people have gone away, left that in that position, and it's just been pouring out. So what you have to do is if you take a radiator off the wall and you've got a thermostatic valve on it, is to remove the thermostatic valve and replace it with what they call a service head, which is a screwed down cap which will keep that in the closed position. And if you can't do that, cap it off at this end where the outlet is and that will achieve the same thing. But never ever go away and leave a radiator unattended if it's only isolated on the thermostatic valve. Okay, so when you've done that, if you've actually gone down to the lock shield valve, which is the other end here, and you may have turned that round with a spanner or a pair of pliers or whatever, and you've isolated that valve at that end, what we've now got to do is to open that valve up again afterwards when the radiator is back on the wall to allow the water to flow through. Now, what's the problem there? The problem there is that those lock shield valves are used to balance the system. On one end, you've got a hand wheel valve or a thermostatic valve, which turns the water on and off. As it gets hotter, it turns the water off. But on the other end, you've got a lock shield valve, which is used to control the flow through the system of the water. Now, I'm gonna go into this in some detail in another video, but all I wanna to say to you is, if you turn that lock shield valve off, count the number of turns you turn it off, write that down, pencil it down somewhere, and turn that valve on by the same number of turns. Then the radiator will stay balanced with the rest of the system. If you don't do that, if you don't open that up enough or you open it up too much, you may find that this radiator robs water from another radiator along the system. So if you've got a radiator at the end of the run and it's not heating up and you've tried all those things I've talked about, which is the air, the sludge, and the jammed valve, and you find it's still not heating up, it could be that the balance of it is wrong. So in that case, you would open up that lock shield valve fully and probably have to go and choke down some of the others a little bit to share the flow out among the different radiators. But that's a thing we call balancing the system and I really want to go into that in more detail in another video. So I'm Roger Bisbee. I hope you found that useful. I hope that saved you a lot of money just calling people out. If you can get them, this is the problem these days. You can't get a plumber to come out and do a little job like that. So if you can do it and you can solve the problem, then that's all well and good. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that little bell so you get notifications of all the new videos that are coming up.